The recording is happening. We, <laughs> we are live. Uh, good start. Uh, good start. Okay, let's crack on. And we are not recording uh, the screen. Instead, I am taking all our brilliant thoughts and I might add some images to them later. So it's like a podcast <laughs> or whatever. Brilliant thoughts might be overselling it. <laughs> <laughs> so like today's agenda is to continue working on Nali and Scribe, codename Steve, in collision course and this is where we have we have already put them together. We have already um I think this is uh let's let's begin from the point where we have already sent them off from uh from Svalbard. So it's maybe they are just setting out or maybe they are already en route, but basically they they are no longer dealing with the station. They are now uh, interacting with each other. Um should I move the note that's like as they travel initially each is in their own ship and they exchange messages. Should I bring that into the Nali and Scribe situation. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. So, if there are some notes elsewhere that should be here chronologically, then bring them over. Because I think at this point, this, this sort of them not being, well, them being on their own unique ships is the point where they're traveling and they're sort of doing their own research into the list and coming together occasionally to discuss what they found. Well, they are like you and me on Discord right now. They are in constant contact. So oh. I, I don't think there's much independent uh, uh, stuff going on. I think uh, what they discuss about the list or what they browse in the list happens on both of their screens and they're, they're doing this together. Uh, it could be that Scribe uh, maybe analyzes something on his own. And this gives me an idea. It could even be that uh, uh, that scribe, I mean Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's just one scribe right now, so I'm going with scribe. Uh, it could even be that uh, scribe either invites Nolly over to his ship or decides to go on Nolly's ship because he doesn't want to be alone too much. Precisely because he is already in the overthinking mode and he needs to just distract himself from that. So let's say initially uh, they uh, they part they depart from Svalbard each on their own ship, although they should tether themselves together uh, pretty soon or or from the start. But uh, as the journey continues. They they should decide to get together on one ship, and it, uh, and at this point I would think that uh, Scribe would move over to Nali's because he can. I think it's easier for him to take his uh, uh, doodads with him, like uh, he uh, because he is technically on the mission now. Uh, he has all his field board equipment, so he has charged his uh, charged up his uh, uh, scrub suit, and uh, and he has all his technology. He could even it could even be that his his true motivation uh, to move over to knowledge ship uh, is that uh, he can't bear being alone and he can't uh, he can't handle his excessive uh, thoughts or his uh, obsessing over the over the over the mission and over the list uh, but what he tells Nolly is that uh, he needs something fixed with his suit so it's like the uh, what's the word sweet and the excuse or the uh, pretext uh, for for him moving over is is that he needs some fixes 
but his uh, but his actual motivation is that he can't uh, he can't handle being alone. Ooh, night nice line here. <laughs> oh my god, that's like half a <laughs> half a page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the editor is not messing around today. Yeah, I like I like this whole arrangement where I just uh, sprout the uh, random bullshit or like I, I make noises with my mouth and you write it <laughs> down and then there is half a page of text. <coughs> What's that? What? Oh, there's a line that's like, how did you do that? And they're talking about something else, but the guy's like, oh, I opened my mouth and words came out. And he's, <laughs> and he's like, no, not how did you talk, how did you do that? <laughs> oh, that's the Ryan George thingy, right? Ah, uh, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I think, I uh, know, it's like, uh, so you were lying. <laughs> Was it that one? Uh, I think so, they're more his, his skits, not the, um, Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, the first ever person to the the the. Yeah, mm. I think I think it was the story one because I haven't watched too many of those. Yeah, that must have been it. When he's talking about how did you do that, and he's asking how did you lie. Mhm. Mm but the guy's like, oh, I I opened the tap and let the sounds come out. Okay, I got us off topic there real quick. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. uh Focus. <laughs> 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 right. So, so yes. So, two ships, two men, two ships. Uh, one mission. Just the bros, yo. And What's going on? I don't know. Well, the neighbor's dog is barking. Uh, the other neighbors are building something. Uh, somebody is sewing something. So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of Did stuff going on. Yeah, the, the usual. I think the neighbor's dog spotted an airplane or something. That's <laughs> that's his favorite favorite sport, catching airplanes. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me think. I'm extremely poorly equipped for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jumping ahead a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking that the situation might break into two chapters, uh, or at least uh, scenes from two different perspectives. So it's like one and the other. Uh, so there will be uh, there will be Nolith's perspective and Scribe's perspective. Now this is of course since they are actively uh, digging into the list now, and they are actively uh, actively going over some names. I think we're gonna have to begin. Uh, adding things to the list ourselves, so like mm -hmm. we 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 have to start taking notes on on the list and also on some of the uh, quote unquote unlucky entries in there. Uh, this could actually happen in a separate document, like this, the because in the end the list is sort of independent from what the guys are doing, and we need to use it in several times. So maybe start a new document in the collision course folder. Okay, new document. New document. Yep, created and shared. Yoink. And... The list. <laughs> the list. Yeah, because we have other document or other note documents for separate things as well. I'm just going to call it the list for now and you can rename it as usually fit. I think the list is pretty good. <laughs> the list. And it's in all caps, so you know serious yes. business. We're right, mucking so around. One name we know for sure is on this list is Fortune Harbour. Yeah. Uh, can, uh, can you 
offer some ideas why he is on the list or like basically somebody's so I'm, I'm thinking like there is somebody's entry and then uh, there could be like fictional notes about the person and then there is what we know mm. I've always felt that Fortune, because of his the genius level intellect regarding aquaponics and that sort of thing, he might be the sort of person to make like scientific breakthroughs mm -hmm. and that kind of thing that would be of benefit to many people. Mm -hmm. uh, why people are hunting him down and trying to, well, not just him but everybody else on the list, um, Uh, like if he's if he's so valuable, why kill him? Sort of thing. Well, so that the competition wouldn't have him, for example, and it's mm. and and it could be that they don't really, I mean, they don't really want to kill him. Maybe maybe that's why he's still alive. Is that uh, maybe? Ooh, here's an idea. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, but this time you write it down somewhere. Okay. I, I'm gonna move over. Uh, so it could be that there actually are uh, proper operatives who know where Fortune is but they haven't killed him precisely because point because they, they want him alive but there is another aspect to this so hmm it could be uh, like uh, the uh, the dimension that we have to keep in mind here is the multiverse dimension or the the, the multiverse aspect. So like, if this particular Fortune Harper is killed off, it means that some other Fortune Harper in some other variation is given is given precedence over him. So it could be that somebody is specifically weeding out. Uh, certain uh, variations because they they are trying to either implant somebody in a given reality or they are uh, trying to limit the, the chaos factor or whatever so it's like with each person let me uh, let me move down here uh, for each person of interest <laughs> so it's like somebody, uh, uh, some person who is actually somewhat insignificant in their own timeline uh, might be a trigger or or a sort of trigger person or or somehow relevant to some other event so it's like um, if you think about uh, if, if you think about heist movies think about a heist and there is usually some seemingly random unimportant person who is actually a who actually has a huge impact on how the other people behave, like uh, uh, like Eddie in Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, or like uh, in Mission Impossible, there is the clerk who uh, who is given uh, who. Uh, who 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 has control to this r one room, or like 
I don't know, the taxi driver who can get you across the across town uh, in less time than others, but the okay. day that he is not uh, working, you're going to be late. So that, mm. that, that sort of thing. So like the barista who can make that special blend that uh, the mafia boss's nephew likes. And and if you if you remove the barista, the mafia boss's nephew will not be happy. Uh, he might be yelling at the others, which in turn puts a uh, hitman on on the edge, which make him miss a, miss the shot or you know that 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 sort of schemes. So it's, it's like, like a, a linking reaction. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like human Rube Goldberg uh, chain. So it could be that some people in the list. I'm, I'm going to write this down myself. Oh, okay, you got this. Uh, oh, cool. Some people in the list might be part of some multiverse scale group. Goldberg chain. Some others might be value valuable slash of interest for other reasons. Point reasons vary. Hmm. This gives me next idea, and now you can you can type again. Okay. So so what if this uh, this list or these lists uh, have to do with a specific uh, scheme or a specific uh, conspiracy? So it's like uh, it is some something specific that some servo wants to achieve and and these people in the list are part of that scheme somehow or like he he has he his plans rely on these people somehow and and it's not like my thing my my thinking is that it is not a clear cut hit list but instead uh, it is in indeed uh, the the common denominator is is the goal, and all of these people fit into this goal in a different manner. And uh, the list that Stripe has could be a more complete list, so that uh, the list that Nolly has is only like one fraction. Of, uh, of what Scribe has. Or, alternatively, it could be that uh, they each have different versions of the same list. Like different, I mean, different reality versions. So that how, how the same things have played out uh, differently in substreams. So, in either case, or in either way, there shall be multiverse shenanigans. That that much I'm certain of. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Yeah. Shenanigans. And uh, once again. Uh, Keep writing. No. Uh, just okay. just thinking out loud. So once again, we might leave figuring out what the exact conspiracy is for another date. But at least now now we know the nature of the list, so it's like we can uh, uh, we can start populating the list. Ooh, <laughs> here's here's an idea. We could even uh, make it a different task to sort of come up with the. Uh, come up with a heist plan or a 
scheme from Servo's uh, Servo's perspective. Mm. Oh. And again, whether we actually use uh, Servo's scheme uh, as a separate story, I don't know. But uh, if we have it somewhere, then we can use it as a reference. So I, I think uh, this is a bigger task than uh, than today's session, but uh, but this is this is something to to figure. And I was also thinking maybe we can ask Kiori's uh, input in there. Like we probably we we should be able to keep on writing nevertheless. But if uh, he has some thoughts uh, regarding Servo uh, the, uh, and those thoughts work with our current uh, concept uh, then I will happily integrate those as well uh, I am not going to comment on this right now but I am going to make a note in the Discord that yep. after recording is finished we need to talk Okay. Kyoto, I was going to put Kyoto here Yeah, no doubt we're still good friends, don't worry, it's nothing <laughs> like that, but it is something a little bit serious that needs Oh, okay. So, uh, I, at risk of giving too much away on the recording, because I don't know what we're doing with this, I don't know if it's going on mm -hmm. YouTube or whatever, uh, I am yeah. going to veer steadily no. away from this topic. <laughs> no down and discuss later. Uh, right, so... Uh, and also the servo situation and servo conspiracy is is its own topic and uh, I think right now I will just I'm, I w I'm happy that there is a note that uh, that this list has to do with specific conspiracy but I think the conspiracy itself uh, needs a proper or like it it needs its own session basically <laughs> right but now back to our guys. If you want me to write some stuff down, give uh, I'm thinking not not yet. Okay, so this document is the list, and now back to the situation. So I think maybe let's make some notes. What do you either of them want? What are Nolly and Scribe's goals? Yeah, this? yeah, and uh, in in this uh, in the context of this situation, I'm thinking like immediate goals. Previously, it was mentioned that uh, the scrap station was potentially under risk. Mhm. Mm um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a starting point. I don't know where it leads. I don't know yeah. how Gnarly could affect on that and potentially save the scrap station. Uh, um, I, th I think that was a placeholder thought. Like, uh, uh, I was trying to figure out what motivates Gnarly to dig into this list in the first place. Or like, why, mm. why is it important that he... Uh, like why why is it so important why why does it catch his eye so much that he that he actually uh, pursues it into some strange scholarly place etc mm. and uh, and uh, I think the immediate thought was that what if uh, the scrap station was somehow threatened in there but uh, I'm thinking we can come up somet with something better, maybe. Okay. Uh, this doesn't mean that the scrap station isn't in danger. Like, I would think that maybe uh, later in the story uh, the scrap station does get under some unwanted attention and or attack, etc. Uh, but I don't quite want to make it uh, the actual plot point. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mean from uh, the interest point, like the uh, the stuff that picks Nolly's interest should be should be something different. Uh, it's, 
it also strikes, strikes me like, you know how in when you when you see people playing Dungeons and Dragons, they always go for these sort of really elaborate plans. Mm -hmm. where if they just told the people in charge of whatever was under threat, the people in charge would probably just deal with it. Yeah, I yeah. imagine Gnarly would go to the if he had evidence that was like, hey man, we we might be in danger here. He would just tell the people at the yeah. station. Yeah, like, look, I, I found this sword data, and uh, from what I gather is that there is some sort of danger, so let's do something about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's not make it an idiot ball thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, instead... Oh, great, now somebody has started cutting the hedge. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, instead, I'm thinking it, it might have to do something uh, with his family and uh, and maybe like not something that means immediate danger but more like origins and stuff because again uh, I would I would think that at first uh, at first, neither Nali or Scribe uh, should uh, should know for sure, or or should treat this list as something dangerous. So, like at first, it is it is just something that has made them obsessed with uh, finding out something, and uh, the danger the idea that, oh, wait, look, all of these people are dead. This is something that they find out uh, as a result of this situation. So, I'm thinking, uh, in the beginning, they travel separate, or like, they travel uh, each in their own ship. They review the list, they discuss the list, uh, maybe they pick uh, their first destination, or like the first uh, name to check out, they actually go there, and then they will find out that this person uh, has recently and unpleasantly uh, ceased living, and then uh, they probably uh, stay at this first place for a little while, uh, gather their wits, and try to research the rest of the list without going anywhere. So this this is the point where like wait what's what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm still thinking whether they visit they, whether they physically visit one or two people, but. Uh, uh, I would think that if after they find the first person dead, they should already uh, do more homework, like not uh, not simply uh, not simply decide like okay let's let's pick another one then and go. Instead, they pick pick another one and uh, uh, and try to find out what's their status. Oh, hang on, my alarm's going off. <laughs> yes, oh. and I am changing places. Right. Okay. This is one, two, three, four, five, 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 they reach a place and then they stay in that place for a little while because they would need to, you know, get information from uh, from somewhere. Uh, they would need uh, information updates from other scribes and from central databases and, and such. And it could easily be that the, the place where they go, uh, this, this first rendezvous or first uh, first name to check out, uh, after they depart from there, this is where an alien scribe, uh, quote unquote, moved together into one ship.
or like this is where scribe uh, requests to travel together in one ship instead of just uh, uh, just messaging. I imagine, also, I'm just going back to the logistics of this real quick, I imagine it's easier for Nali's ship to tap into <coughs> uh, Scribe's sort of, or Codex's computing power than it would be for Codex to tap into. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. Uh, I think the ship dynamics is something we would uh, we would need to tackle separately because uh, oh yeah, and 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 ship names <laughs> because Codex and Theory are too similar. Codex and Sheila. Yeah, Codex and Sheila. So <laughs> so I think there would be. Uh, different tasks that each uh, ship does better, so I would think uh, ah. Sheila is physically more capable and maybe bigger and and more uh, more in line with you know grabbing stuff and collecting stuff, whereas Codex is basically a flying workstation, so it's it's like. It's like a scribe's little little headquarters out of home. So it's all about computations and research and databases and data storage and, and that sort of thing. Oh, and a useful idea here is that we can already start using the three flavors that we have set aside for, for the three main characters. So it's mm. like uh, Scribe is all about information and data storage. Nali is all about technology and tech storage and scrap. And Jewel is all about uh, fighting and, and, and bounty hunting. So she would have the weapons cabinet, Nali would have the toolbox, and Scribe would have the library. So that, that's the sort of simplifying metaphor here. Can we do Jewel again? Sorry. A weapons cabinet, I think. Armory. <laughs> so we have the street samurai, the rigger, <laughs> and the hacker. I got the uh, shadow on. Uh, beginner box is mm -hmm. like all the shit I've given you four characters, but I haven't given you any character sheets. I'm oh. not sure we can extrapolate or use our old characters. Ooh. Yeah. Games. Um, so. Yeah. Me and Digi were working extremely hard the other day to get an RPG chat room set up. <laughs> I think possibly you can see it, but if not, I can invite you in. Okay, now I, I can't hear very well. Uh, uh -oh. I, I might have to switch uh, place again, or maybe not. Right. So where we're at? I think I'm gonna wrap uh, this recording because I think it's been going on for over over an hour and. Really? Let's see. Oh no. Half, half an hour. Oh, okay. That's not too too bad. So I think uh, we can do a little bit more before I wrap this up. Mm -hmm. So we well, we, can, yeah. we can summarize what we've sort of established. Yeah, established let's sort of let's like let's summarize and then start the uh, the next one because the bite sized recordings are better. So what what did you glean from all this? What what did you get from my yapping, me moving my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> and the sound's coming out. Uh, right, so we've established that Scribe and Ali uh, have left uh, the Svalbard. They're in separate ships, but those ships are sort of tethered together somehow mm -hmm. uh, in constant communication. They can send messages back and forth, no problem. Uh, Nali and Scribe are sort of researching the list uh, and they come together occasionally for conversation or they just talk to one another over the. To discuss the list, they go in search of 
one of the people on the list, and when mm -hmm. they get there, they find out that that person has died in unfortunate circumstances. And instead of moving on to the next person straight away, they hang out, they do some research, they make use of what I describe, knows and mm -hmm. feels, that sort of thing. Uh, and from there, I think they established that a lot of other people on the list are either MIA, being killed mm -hmm. in unfortunate circumstances. So they're not just chasing after the dead ends all the time. Mm -hmm. Sat and thought about it now, uh, and that potentially makes them ask questions like, well, "What's going on? What's what, mm -hmm. what else is happening? What's the larger conspiracy?" Um, and it's at that point when they decide to leave that area the scribe makes the request to Nali to say, "Look, uh, can I join you on your ship?" And the reason he's doing this is because he doesn't want to be alone anymore. He's still in. He's still got some stuff lodged in his head that mm -hmm. could be a risk. Um, and that's when they start travelling together and it could be at this point that they decide to go after Fortune but indirectly uh, via Jewel, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, going after Fortune uh, is like the next next step. Right, so so okay. it's like after, after they have... after they have... Uh, uh, found their first uh, person of interest and found that this person is dead then there should be like a little bit of downtime uh, in wherever they are while the information arrives or like why, while they make cure, curious, curious, curious? Uh, while, while they get the, their data in line and uh, from there on this is where they this is where they uh, learn that so this person is deceased this person is deceased this person is deceased is there anybody alive in this list and that's where like uh, just one or, or 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 something like that or like just one in reasonable distance it could it could be that literally fortune is the last one alive and not and not because uh, uh, not because the baddies haven't gotten to him yet, but because uh, he, is so, he is supposed to be alive. But of course, uh, Scribe and Nali do not know this. So they decide to uh, find fortune. But yeah, I think uh, it, o it, it basically leads to, uh, to where you said. It's, it's a question of pacing, like how much... Uh, uh, how much uh, space and 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 attention we give to each uh, stage. Good. Happy. Happy. Okay. Happy. I am going to wrap up this recording, and then we can do some more, etc. Mm -hmm. Stop.